Hi, Tom from the Guna Talk here. Uh, the mood amongst Arsenal fans. That is a, a good question, uh, a question which has many answers, but the simple one is not great. Uh, obviously, as you say, we've only just got out of a loss against Sheffield United and then crawled back with the help of Nicola Pepe to beat Vittoria 3-2 in the Europa League. And I mean, when you're looking at the mood of Arsenal fans since Arsene Wenger, we really sort of expected a little bit more uh, from the person that would come in to take on the Frenchman's legacy. And for me, Emery at this point, in my opinion, is at the stage where a decision could be, and possibly even needs to be made as soon as possible to avoid slipping into a bit of a dead season. And for me, when it comes to Unai Emery and the mood of Arsenal fans, it's it's weird because we always used to have this divide of Arsene Wenger ins and uh, Arsene Wenger knows best. And this sort of split between those fans has now sort of come together oddly, but not really in the way that we wanted it to because they've come together uh, and the majority of fans may even tell you that they would probably want Unai Emery to move on at this point, which when you consider it's only, it's been less than 18 months uh, since uh, the start of the last, obviously the previous season, and so therefore a turnaround this quick and a negative sort of sink in the manager's opinion in the fan base at this stage really does go to show. I don't want to say the poor job he's done because I don't think it's been poor, but just sort of hasn't really progressed Arsenal in any sort of way, and that has led to the fan base feeling very disillusioned with our current manager and ultimately wanting the Spaniard to move on. It's fairly simple what Palace need to do against Arsenal and that's just play their game because the biggest, biggest criticism that we have of Unai Emery right now is that he's so passive and he's so allowing and inviting of other opposition teams to come and play their game and do what they want and that obviously leads to us becoming under a lot of pressure in games. You watched the Liverpool game when we went to Anfield and we were enabling them to put as many crosses into the box as feasibly possible. We went to Vicarage Road and played against the Watford side that absolutely dominated the game. Should have won, deserved more than just the one point that they got. They crawled back after going 2-0 down somehow. I don't know how we even went 2-0 up, but they did that because we were so passive and we allowed them into our half. We allowed them to take shots, play key passes, and no one really closed down. There was no real pressure. We went to Manchester United, a team that has been under utter scrutiny all season for their poor performances. And again, we never really tested them. We allowed them to play their game and do what they can do if they're allowed that. And the thing against Man United is so many teams this season have not allowed them space. They've challenged them, they've pressed them. And Arsenal just don't seem to do that right now. And defensively, we have plenty of flaws. And with the likes of Zaha, as I've already mentioned, on the wings, I think that he's going to have an absolute field day against the likes of Callum Chambers and Kalasnac because we know that Zaha does like to move fluidly around the pitch. And that can be really dangerous against an Arsenal side with defensive errors in them. Maybe Kieran Tierney will start. I think that I th no, that is definitely what the fan base want. Whether Hector Bellerin is yet match fit after his game against Victoria to start as well, I don't know. I don't think he will. But whatever happens, I know that Arsenal have got errors in them. And in terms of what Palace need to do, they just need to play their game because Arsenal are a team that, at this moment in time, kind of cater to the other team's needs right now. And it's extremely frustrating. So, yeah, just play your game and I think you'll be fine. Arsenal teams of old used to have unbelievable defences and unbelievable midfields. You think of Tony Adams, you think of Sol Campbell, you think of Patrick Vieira, Gilberto Silva. Even slightly further on with the likes of Cesc Fabregas in his prime. Um, and the front line was whilst we had Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, Ian Wright in the past and, and other strikers it was always the defensive midfield that sort of symbolised the strength of the red side of North London now that has catastrophically changed uh, defensively Arsenal are extremely poor and that is our main weakness um, but ultimately the, the gap between them and the midfield is also a key error that keeps on coming up game on game. The, the lack of cover from the midfield for the defence, which makes them a lot worse, is our biggest weakness by far. And I think that if Palace can get in between the lines and really cut apart the gap between the midfield and the defence, they'll have an absolutely fantastic time on Sunday afternoon. In terms of Arsenal's strengths, though, you can't look too far past our front line. Aubameyang being the main and key threat. Scored plenty of goals this season and plenty of goals since he obviously arrived from Borussia Dortmund now. We've had some issues in terms of who we select for that front line. Lacazette is now back, which you would imagine means he goes central, which pushes Alba out to the left. Now, that takes a little bit away from the Gabonese's quality. And then you've got Nicola Pepe on the right-hand side, who has sort of struggled a bit. But if that game against Vittorio where he came on and scored two free kicks, yes, still no goal from open play. 
But at the same time, when that guy gets firing after 22 league goals last season and 10 assists, 11 assists last season for Lille, you know that he's got a lot of quality in him. And as soon as he explodes onto the scene in the Premier League, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Is that now? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. But Palace have definitely got to look out for Arsenal's front line. Can't let him get in behind too much. I would suggest dropping off and not letting him run in behind as much as uh, Arsenal possibly can do. Because if you play a high line against Arsenal, you will get punished. And so that's going to be the key thing that Palace need to watch out for on Sunday. For me, I think Palace have done well this season. I think they've gone under the radar in terms of their actual success. At the start of the season, people sort of expected the likes of Leicester, who are up there, but also Wolves and, and Watford, again, to be up in sort of the top half of the table. And the, those latter two have definitely trailed off this season, not had the most brightest of starts. But Palace have had some interesting games so far. I watched the West Ham game, which they won 2-1 at the London Stadium, and they surprised me with the tenacity and, and, and their drive to win that game. And, and Jordan Ayew, I mean, he's sort of, it's a weird one because I always look to Jordan Ayew as someone who's never really caught the eye. I thought it was a bit of a weird signing when he came in and wasn't ever going to bring too much, but he's definitely turned the corner this season for sure, and, and those goals have been really important. But those goals, and I think goals is the main issue for Palace in games, is that they're not the highest of scorers in fixtures, but they are pulling off some decent results. The Manchester United one, for instance, was, was extremely impressive, but there are games against like City and, and Spurs where they've lost fairly comfortably, and that means that they are easily gettable in certain areas and defensively they can be flawed. Patrick Van Arnholt I think is the second highest scorer with two goals in the Premier League if I'm not mistaken so goals is definitely an issue um, but they're a side that have got a lot of tenacity and drive and vigour and passion about them and, and those adjectives are for me the perfect way to describe a team that can get something over Arsenal because a team that comes to the, uh, the, the Emirates with determination and with um, the drive to win those games and ultimately with the confidence and, and a lack of fear which plenty of teams don't have any fear against Arsenal these days but any team like that that comes to the Emirates is often in a good shape or form to, to get some points there so what do I make of them? I've said already I think they've gone under the radar but I have been quite, quite impressed but the main key area that I think is, is the main issue is certainly getting more regular goals in the fixtures. Now, long-time listeners of The Guna Tool, which is my channel uh, featuring around Arsenal, will know that I am always the optimist and I always go for the, the optimistic scoreline. Even if defeat is the most obvious thing, we could be playing Bayern Munich or Barcelona, it doesn't matter. Um, but I always go for the optimistic scoreline. So I will be going for a 3-1 win for the Arsenal. As I said earlier, and I don't really see how we won't concede in this game. I think it's going to be uh, one which is... A struggle uh, and one we may have to be a bit a little bit gritty in to get the points but I think that hopefully we will be there I'll be there on Sunday um, again as I said with, with biting my nails for the majority of the 90 minutes because I know there's going to be some hairy moments but I think that we should come out with the win but if it wasn't to be the case and Palace did manage to get something trust me it would not surprise me in the slightest and if we lose this game maybe Unai Emery will bite the bullet and that'll be the last sort of stick uh, that has been broken by the people up top and really to start to make those big decisions that need to be made by a lot of the fan base. So, interesting game for sure. It's a big game for both teams. Arsenal needs to get back into that top four, but I'm going to go again with that 3-1 win. So, I'm not going to wish you luck because I'll be lying, um, but good luck for the rest of the season and uh, I hope for a good game on Sunday.